Welcome to Kickback Recovery. Here we go. Surrender to win. Has anybody ever heard that before? Yes. Is that alien to you? There's one hour out there, an active addiction, surrender, even growing up, surrender to win. I won't be having none of that. I'm not surrendering to nothing. You know, in my head, I had things like, grew up listening to certain music and it worked. Some athletics would never surrender, never give in, never let the enemy win. You know, uh, some sort of off a blitz signal, I was still one of those skinhead and yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? Stuff yeah. like that. No surrender, you know, stuff like that. I grew with that attitude for a long, long time. That attitude eventually kind of broke me. You know, when I was using drugs, I never heard of surrender to win. It went over with no surrender. It walked so I went into a rehab and started working on myself. Somebody mentioned, you've got to surrender. And it was like, surrender to what? I didn't, I didn't understand it. Surrender, I heard in some literature, some 12 step literature, surrender to win. And that, if you can learn that and surrender, you know, from self, let go of self, you know, I'm running on self will, you know, surrender, you know, oh, that, that's, where you, that's where the freedom is, that's, that's where miracle happens. Anybody want to touch on that surrender to win? Oh, we'll start off with Danny first, please. Yeah, uh, it's a big one, isn't it? Somebody asked us yesterday, how, how do you surrender? And I was like, I stunned this for a second, do you know what I mean? And, because I'm, I've, I've, um, I'll, my wife used to keep telling me that I, I have a rebellious nature. I was like, I, no, I haven't. <laughs> Cause I, you know, I think it's in the nature, but like, laying it down in this, for me, surrendering, right, is taking my hands off it. I had, in my head, right, I'm, I've got my hands on, on everything, trying to control stuff. And when I surrender, I let it go. I mean, and that's the sort of the like sort of picture I get. Well, and when I read the Bible as well, I think when, for me personally, like I look at like Jesus and he would be that was the ultimate surrender. Mm. And it looked like we were losing. I bet the disciples thought they had lost when he went across and stuff and all that stuff. That's like the ultimate, the ultimate one because he, sur he surrendered to win. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it was like, when that penny dropped with that, like, I just bang. But that's the picture I get if you, like, sort of, it's like taking my hands off, trying to control everything, trying to control me, take my hands off, give in, and say, right, I'm going to do, I'm going to do what's suggested. Yeah. So I think, yeah. Good stuff there. How many years did we run on self will? Our way with the best way. People used to advise us, suggest certain things for our own good. We say or whatever, but we never listen. We just did it our own way. Yeah. Anybody else on that? Jackie, did you want to say something or no? Anybody else at the bike? Resignation and surrender. Resignation is what we feel when we realise we are addicts we are, that haven't yet accepted recovery as a solution to our problem. Many of us found ourselves at the point long before coming to keep back recovery. We may have thought that it was our destiny to be addicts to live and die in our addiction. So it's just you know, a bit of this stuff. Yeah. That bit, the last little sentence, yeah, we may have thought that it was our destiny to be addicts, to live and die in our addiction. For me, that's what, I, I accepted that, that I used drugs. I was powerless over drugs. And for me, you, you know, uh, pre-contemplation comes to mind where I thought I didn't have a problem. You know, it's everybody else with a problem. 
you know, when people are saying, mate, you've got a problem, you know, it's, it, you're looking really poor, like, you know, you, your life, your manageability in your life, you're not turning up, you can't even answer your telephone, you know, it's, I just think, you know, I've got a problem, I've got one bit I did, I've got a problem and it's just, just the way it is, and I'm just going to carry on, you know, I've got no, I weren't ready to give up using drugs, you know, I just thought a lot of using drugs, you just, it were no, no, no. Anybody else want to touch on that or any, any, any other one? It was that bottom one for me that stuck out. Brendan. I think with me is, like I say, is last, last year I had to have a blood surgery in the, my doctors and everyone straight away told me I had to give up the smoking, the drugs and the drink all in the space of two months. And I stopped the smoking, I stopped the drugs straight away. But I knew the other part where me alcohol. And when someone says you've got to, otherwise you're going to die, I carried on because I wasn't ready until I hit the rock bottom where I knew I needed help. Yeah. And that was it. I had, to come, I had to get somewhere and I got my family to help me find somewhere, do something. But as well as the these doctors and people like that don't help you as much as what you need. So you need to find it yourself as well. And then that's all of a sudden I had to surrender and say, listen, I've got a problem. Okay. I think it not to me personally but my twin sister who's got a addiction. She the she got so much uh got so much she's got cancer. So you can then uh, he woke up quite a while and she was just like, Oh, I just fell through this at the thought. And because she's been doing all three of she's kinda of made an excuse to kinda of give up on it quite a while and I've been saying to her like, you know, that was like a, almost like a, um, a sign that she stopped, yeah. but instead she's kinda of using it as time. Yeah, I hope so too. Anybody else? Just for me, yeah, that resigning to it, like, listen, I have got a problem with drugs, you know. Well, yeah, it's the thing, isn't it? You, you get to that point and you resign, like it says, you resign yourself to a drift of life. You mm. accept, right, this mm. is it, to tell it to it's going to be like this till the day I die. Yeah. That's exactly what I thought I was like yeah. for God. Over a decade, probably. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I don't know why or how, but one day it was like, I've had enough of this. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think I find when I was in the dark, yeah, I'm also negating myself by, like, well, it's not my fault, I'm not mm -hmm. going to go about it. I'm, I'm an addict, I'm not the person I was in. I'm powerless to it, but I don't. I don't think like that now, but I can, I can resonate with that completely. Mm -hmm. And I understand that there's the only alternative is to stop or die. There's no way I'm going to make it to 70 and still score. Mm -hmm. I'd probably be dead to 50. Mm -hmm. So, for my spirit, especially. Yeah. Thank you. I remember once I got into uh, some point in my uh, addiction that I got involved with some uh, legalised, they called them, you know, at that time. You're not legal now, but. I remember sat in the toilet once looking at myself and just what I was seeing, I was hallucinating a bit, but I looked really, really old, you know, white and veins and, and stuff. And I just projected out into the future, that's where I'm going to be in Alan Shore Hospital or Northern General when I'm an old man, you know, I'm going to be using. Because I didn't know about recovery, I didn't have a choice of using, I was using all the time, whatever drug I've, I've gone from, from class A's on, on, on to whatever, I'd use anything at one point. You know, if, if it changed the way I felt, <laughs> I'll have that. Just give me anything, you know. There was one point I'll share something. I, I used to mix some cocaine up with 100% caffeine with white powder. Uh, for some, I'm not into that stuff, but that's what I did. I remember the, when the proper drug had gone. I remember going into the pure caffeine and sniffing that and bombing it. And then, how cool is that? And I think, and, I, and believe me, it's not a nice thing when you're doing taking lines of pure caffeine, and you know it, that fuels your anxiety. You know, we've all had a few strong coffees before, haven't we? I thought, oh, I feel a bit, I mean, putting a big like, cracker stuff. But that's where addiction took me to. And, and it had to a few people and stuff. Sally? I think at the, at the resignation stage, you still see the, the drink, the drugs, as that comfort, as, as actually it brings nice feelings. You don't actually want to admit all of the negatives that it brings. And it's become a habit, it, it is, becomes that norm, doesn't it? That safe place to go, that place where all of the emotions of the day or whatever's gone on, it, it, it all gets taken away by that. So as much as at the back of your mind, you've got, you know, this isn't right, it's taken over. You've still got that, but it brings me a comfort. 
So I think, like people have been saying, and, and unless you reach that desperation point, you, you, you're struggling. Yeah. For a lot of us, we didn't even know about recovery, did we? I didn't know what recovery was. You know what I mean? All that. I just resigned to the idea, I've got a problem. And that's it, I'll accept that. I'll just go through it. And whatever comes with it, I'll have to accept. Because I did, I did it myself. But I've shared before, when I was using drugs, I thought, I've got a problem here. But in my head, I'll cross that bridge. Yeah. When it's further along the line, when I need to get out of it, and I kind of kidded myself with that. But when it comes to a time where I was really, really <coughs> poorly, eh? and I had to get myself well, so I'm thinking, oh, I crossed that bridge. You try crossing that bridge. You know, from being ill to well. That's a big bridge to, without, you can't do it on your own. You know, so I resigned, you know about recovery, but you know about keeping that recovery in any other fellowships, you know. I just thought, it would be destined to be, and I, you know, that, that, that would, you know, that's how, you know, the penny drop, not penny drop, but you know, the, the, the cookie crumble though, I've, I've got to put that into words, you know. You know, just that way. Next slide, please. Anybody else before I move on? I think, um, no, no, no. for me, before, I mean, before I came to Sheffield, man, quick, innit? I mean, I never even heard of it. I was just in that bubble where I was saying we're going to die of a drug overdose or someone who was going to kill us. I mean, that was, or I was, that before that was just it. You know, it wasn't until I came, until I got into Newcastle and came into rehab, that I, I discovered, discovered a sort of recovery that I'd, I'd never even seen on TV. I mean, I felt, if, yeah, it was just like totally, it was not in the picture whatsoever. I didn't even, I, I tried a couple of times and just like failed miserably with, you know what I mean, and just thought, this is just it, man. I didn't, I didn't know that was possible. Yeah. Thanks, Danny. Good stuff. Stephen, do you want to say something? Yeah, this is my, when I was young, my first buzz, I got it from January. And I did that up, up until life was filter. But I went through walls. I used to think about it every day as I went to bed and stuff from two pounds and wake up and come back on me. And I'd have to bet on a daily basis for many, many years. But then I did also, I did all the, the way through the year. I had buzzers for you go through uh, 10 years on the way and, and I did it every day so I didn't want cash every day so I never got well no I don't know if I got loads of money but I never never really got any money to be honest so I used to gamble and way back and you know what I mean work work like six days a week but what I can't understand is like when they put me on that tablet by the end by the end like but uh, I got put my hands up in I mean they picked me up from casino I was in casino until the morning when the police picked me up and then I got put on that on hands of it. And by that time, I'd only have sort of one bet a week. It'd be a lot of money. But I'd, I'd think about what football bets were all week. It wouldn't really change my mind. And then I'd put it on. So I'd win one week, lose the next week. And we're talking hundreds of pounds. And that's how I did it. So I, I, I managed, I knew that much about gambling. I knew how to not lose all my money. Do you know what I mean? It got to that stage where I weren't losing, but I had to have a bet to, to live. And it, so I got put my hands up in I've had, I've had two bets in six years. Oh, and it just makes me feel like, I mean, I don't regret not being on it ten years earlier. No, I could have been very, very different. But it was just, it was obviously the bipolar, manic depressive, that time that stops that side of me wanting to take that risk every day or needing to have that buzz every day or to live on the edge every single two days, you know what I mean? Which is draining. But you know, no, no, like I say, I've got addiction problems. I've had like, food, booze, not drugs as much. I've done a lot of drugs, but I never saw it as a big problem for me. But gambling would have been the last thing I would have ever, ever thought I would have given up. So I, I made my life sort of carry on doing this. I didn't want to lose it. Didn't want to lose it, sort of thing. Even though when it cost me like. Well, I didn't used to like losing, what I'm saying, but I, I, I bet to win where some gamblers were not bothered, but they were like the losing. I didn't like the losing, don't get me wrong, but it was just part and parcel of it. Like prison for a, for a, for a, like for a, for a, for a, for a, for a criminal life, and just that's part of it, you've got to take it if you want to do it properly. And it just makes me, I can't understand why a tablet can make me take that away. Do you know what I mean? It's like any addiction, like that, that, was, that was the strongest one. 
that was the strongest one of the tablet that took me away. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. I, I remember Stephen a few, you know, probably six years ago or something like that, when you, we were talking on the telephone, I remember coming up to the more I'd say this, you know, Melbourne General yeah. Hospital. Yeah, yeah. You know, on that, that ward and stuff, and, that, and I met your parents, and, and yeah. so that's when Stephen first reached out. That. And look, you're here now, Stephen, you're taking your meds. Yeah. And that's what it's all about for anybody who's not taking their meds. You yeah. need to be taking your meds yeah. re regularly. We've all, ex well, we've got love somebody we loved around us close down there who's missing the meds or... Coming off my meds meant me the second time that, that when I went to Paulie again, yeah. it was far, far away. Um, I'll never recover from it. Yeah. So we've got to take the meds. Definitely. Take them. I just want to say thank you for your being part of what we do, Stephen, as well, yeah? Yeah. So, so right, moving on, thank you and everybody, yeah? So surrender, yeah? Surrender is what happens after we've accepted we became powerless over our addiction and our lives become unmanageable, yeah? So we, acceptance, the first thing we accepted, we've got a problem with drugs. By using drugs in big amounts, or not so much amount for some people, a manageability came into our lives, yeah? We couldn't manage anything as life fell apart, turned to poo, yeah? We've done it, we kept using drugs, we didn't turn up, we didn't show up, we didn't answer the phone calls, we didn't stick to appointments, we, relationships broke down, the unmanageability of using came into our lives. So surrendering means having the open-mindedness to see things in a new way, so we, we come into recovery, walk into a recovery meeting, we go to a rehab, we go with an open mind, we become willing, we become honest. They're the, they're the three things, with those three things you are well on your way. But it's a 12-step stuff, yeah? But I'm no spokesperson for any 12-step fellowship. I, I put that on court that, you know what I mean, we're coming from a place of kickback recovery. I have 12-step recovery foundation, but I'm not a spokesperson for any 12-step <laughs> stuff. Um, kickback, we do borrow a bit of literature, but we, we make that quite, um, we, we say that, you know what I mean? All right, Brendan? Yes, yeah, good, good stuff there. So it means having the open mind is to see things in a way as well as the willingness to live differently and clean, yeah? So, so we surrender, we surrender to the idea that, you know what, using drugs is a bad idea, it is, isn't it? People die from it, you know, our lives, we're, we're, we're at a bloody kickback meeting, you know what I mean? We don't really want to be here, we have to be here. Some of you do want to be here, but this is our medicine. There's no, no cure for the, for, for the illness of addiction. Um, it is treatable, and that's what we do. What we're doing now is treating our illness, this is our medicine. We have to come to regular recovery meetings. Anybody want to touch on that surrender stuff or that? What's just that paragraph? What's there? Anybody? Can everybody see it all right, yeah? Of course. That's the reason why we do the live stream things, it's to educate people, yeah. yeah? This is education, you know what we're reading, these teachings, you know, if you read the big book, that's educating you, if you read the basic text, that's education. At Kickback, this is education, and that's why we live stream, we pray for people who can't get to a meeting, we make these videos, that's to share the education with people who've got no understanding of addiction, who probably don't need to understand anything. But we can plant a few seeds along the way, show people there is hope, you know what I mean? There is a life after addiction, you know, there's a good life, you know, I'm living proof, you're living proof, you know what I mean? It's, 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 I'm proud to be in recovery. I'm no longer hang, hanging about in them shadows, you know, in that full of guilt, shame, fear. You know, I'm, I'm proud to stand here and say I am recovering. 
sometimes they'll say I'm recovered, you know, I don't use drink no more, I don't use drugs anymore. I will pick up different things, I will pick up people, I'll pick up food, as you ought to see, you know. I'll pick up whatever, you know what I mean? I'm constantly working on myself, you know, and I will be for the rest of my life. I and mean, I have to come to these meetings, I have to do these teachings, it keeps me well. We talked about, say we had some volunteering training after, earlier, I must have well done everybody turned up for that. But you know, we went for all the basic things of being a volunteer, where it, where, where it involves, you know, the confidentiality stuff. You all, how we can volunteer, you know, give our time up. And the benefits of volunteering, were brilliant early, we were nice and simple. We looked at people who just joined us and welcome to come to our training and stuff like that, yeah. Anybody else on that stuff, yeah? I think for me, surrender one, accepting that I have to have some pharmaceutical medication to keep me well. Yeah. I've always had a problem with it because, you know when you talk about addiction, you know, I've never, had addiction of drugs, but I, am I addicted to my medication because I have to take it to keep well? And I have this battle going off inside me. If I don't take it, I know I'm going to be hospitalised. So I really have this big battle inside me, but it got to a stage about five or six years ago, I thought to myself, it's keeping me well. The right medication keeps me well and keeps me out of hospital when I'm here today, and this is just topping that up for me. I'm still battling with the fact I've got to take some pharmaceutical medication and I'll be have to be on it for yeah. the rest of my life. Nice one, thank you for your honesty. It's about acceptance, isn't it? You have to accept. Yeah. I have to take certain medication every morning, you know, for my underactive thyroid gland, 125 mm with the thyroxine, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the smallest tablets in the world, you know, the thought of having them. Yeah. Some people have them at night, but I put them under my tongue, I, I like to do it that way. You know, sometimes, I've, why do I have to do it? Sometimes I have missed before, I've learned the lesson when I do miss my medication. It might happen then, but in time it will catch up with me. I will become depressed, I won't have the energy, I won't want to be doing this. It's acceptance that we have to take his meds at the right time, every day, and it keeps us well. And this is this is medi medication as well, you know? It is, and you've got to accept that I have to do this, or you have to do this, it's part of your recovery program. It's the medicine that's needed to keep, to stay well. And believe me, if you don't, if you stop coming to these meetings, if you stay away from what's, let's call it your medicine, you will become unwell again. Yeah? Everybody all right with that? Jackie? I just love it, what Sean said, is because um, I, I have to turn my kids out of me, I was taking medication for you, and all the time you'll stop by this medication. And it's just recently I'm meeting saying that I've got to get rid of it right now. But there's no temptation to just like, not, because now I said that I've got to take this medication, but it's just like saying, like, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And we've got to be mindful as well that taking the right amounts and we've all done it, or you know, we can abuse this medication, can't we? Some people will all bite, stop, pile it, and wait for some of and, and, and drop it, and then you know where that takes us to, doesn't it? Hospital stayovers and and, and sometimes a lot, a lot worse, don't it, for some people. Stephen? I think that's yeah. it. I mean, uh, there are lots of side effects of tablets. But if you need, if you have, if you've got to take them, you've got to take them, you've got to, you've got to work out your life with the side effects. Because everybody really who has a relapse in mental health, so they've stopped taking tablets. You know what I mean? It's all right when it wants, but people repeatedly stop taking medication and make it something else. Thank you. Brendan? I mean, mine were probably last week, as we all know, we said we didn't have a meeting because uh, you went away and that, and you had to with COVID restrictions and everything. Mine were last week, Monday, Monday and Tuesday, and that when I didn't come to this group, I was struggling really bad, even though you could do meetings and that. I was really struggling, I'm thinking I didn't know what to do. And I think now I know, not just I have, but I've got a problem with alcohol, but I've got, I need this with all you guys to support me as well in that kind of way. So thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you, Brendan. Anybody else? Is that the um, same as they were saying in my article from the manager book? At the minute, my addiction is manageable, but it doesn't mean that I want it. I've been in places before where I've been injected heroin, I've been smoking crack, 
up for days, doing things that I shouldn't be doing to get my hair. But at the minute, I don't have to struggle for something to watch my daughter while going up for the resources or the money or the contact. So even though it's easier, I'm more determined now to get off the than I were when I ran the brink of being homeless. I just, I mean, I don't think it's because of the amount of time that's passed and I know where it can lead and I know there's no way I'm going to go back to that. It's not going to happen. And I know everybody can say that. Mm. But the only way for me is for you to go forward, even though it's not on a manageable stage. But for me personally, it is. I, I, I have felt for years. I haven't mm. felt anything from medication. That was it again, that was it. And I only feel what the point is just treading water. And I'm also conscious constantly of this mom guilt. Because I do things for my daughter. She's provided for, she's better than everything else. But she's not getting 100% of me mm. from what I can give her. Because of that blocking she gets with her medication. Because it's an anesthetic in it and it blocks mm. her emotionally yeah. as well as physically. And I want to give her all of what she should have. She's entitled to that. So it's not doing it for my daughter, it's doing it for me. But everyone benefits as well. So it's not manageable. I'm just yeah. happy with her. I just yeah. can't be with her. Otherwise, there's no point. Yeah. Sick and yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I'm tired of not feeling as well though. It's not feeling anything, just going through life, not feeling anything, being envious of people. When I'm saying I feel out of having fun and I'm just walking around going through emotions, I'm sick of it. There's no point when I see other people who are a lot worse off and so poor and have so much more problems than I am. I think, what am I doing? I'm feeling sorry for myself. What can you have? You're not going to get anywhere by doing that. So the only one she looks at, I get it, but at the same time, you know, what was the situation with this time? It's, it's about being ready to. I don't, are you, the beautiful words that I've just heard there, I'm sure we all forget that. No, it's, it's lovely to have a newcomer to come in and to surrender and to speak like that, speak from the heart, isn't it? You know, you're definitely in the right place and you definitely, it's about time as well. As Jilly mentioned, it's about having enough, being sick and tired, being sick and tired. Eventually, we'll become exhausted with, 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 with running on self will. You know, all the pain we cause to ourselves, to other people. Not just physically, mentally, it's, you know, you know our, our, our addiction distances it, us from families, daughters and sons, you know. It takes away people from us, you know. It comes to a point where you just, you know what I mean, you just, it's that awakening, you know, that I want more than this. I don't want to exist anymore. I want to feel again. Whatever I'm feeling, whether good or bad, I want to feel it. You know? Good. I'd love it to hear. The gift of desperation, we're saying it again. It's a beautiful thing. It truly is. That's when we come well. You know, I bet we're rock bottom. Thank you. I just have to remind remind you know about the cross when the conversation starts crossing over. To, nobody's fault. It's, it, it, I could have been a bit on ball, but obviously we've got newcomers in. Uh, it happens, but brilliant. I just want to say what I've heard is it's just lovely stuff. We've got Chris and then Alison. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to cross you about. I didn't say that, Nick, but uh, I must say uh, um, we sat there if you want to do it. You know what I mean? You, you want to do it. Why are you yeah. sat there? Oh, I know, I don't you know what I mean? So, so you, I don't know. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm just giving a bit of a. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you for your input. Yeah. Say with that, I want to do it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I feel how you feel. I always have to run it. I know what's happening with me. And I don't know why, but it's tough. It's tough. I find it tough. I know what's happening with me. But anyway, I'll put my phone. Thank you. Well, Alison. Yeah, I just want to say I'm sorry, but I need to get back to my kids. And it's always happened at home. Are you sure? Right, we'll call you. Straight up. Yeah. Right, I'll assume. Yes. Go. I'll give you a bell. Four o'clock, yeah? Okay. Right, anybody else on that stuff? So we, we need to surrender, yeah? We've had enough of our own self will. Our way of thinking always got us in trouble. Yeah, our best way of thinking always got us in trouble. I'll do it my way, in, in whatever. It's my way or the highway to certain people, yeah? We're all self seeking, self obsessed. Manipulating, controlling outcomes. It always got us in a mess, didn't it? That's why we're that's why we're here now, isn't it? Because our way of thinking got us in trouble. The battle letting go of that, surrender from self, go away, yeah? Open up to suggestions, what can a recovery programme that will get as well, whatever that is. Different strokes for different folks, you know what I mean? And getting involved, the willingness to, 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 to live differently, being willing to live clean. Yeah, there's a life out there for us all. Well, I'm living it. There's other people in here living a clean life. Don't have to use no more. Got up this morning, I've got a choice. Go to the gym. Do, do a bit of one-to-one -one with Dan in. Do a bit of paperwork with Sally, you know what I mean? Well, I'll go to the gym. I'll have a shower. You know what I mean? I don't have to, I, I'm not even thinking about scoring. You know, I'm not. It's gone. That, that, that desire for me is gone to, 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 to use drugs. And it's gone by working a recovery program. When I first came into these rooms, into these meetings, <laughs> It were with me for, for, for a few years. I, I've left meetings before and, and used, I've scored. I don't want to. You know, they'll set working program and your sponsor, do what's suggested. Sometimes my obsessions became that powerful. There were no other way out to use. But when I was using, I was still thinking, not all is lost, whether that's deluded or not, it worked. I'm going to do what I've got to do. I was always chasing this one last session, one last party for one. This is the last one I spoke about last night. This is going to be a good one. I'm going to try and control the psychosis. I'm going to try and, call, try and control the paranoia. I'm going to try and control how much drugs are used. You know, I'm not going to crack up this time. I always failed. The insanity of it, thinking I could, I could control it and, and, and have a different outcome. It never happened. I had to become sick and tired of becoming sick and tired. I had to surrender to ideas. I can't get that point for one. I used to pray to God, please God, give me that last night. I just want a night, a really good one to finish on. I never got it. I never got it. I had to just give up. I was exhausted. I was, I was an old man. Still at it. I'm not a 20 year old using anymore. It aged. Every time I used to be taking drugs, I, I, I used to look like I'd just been dug up. Yeah. You know, I put a line out. You know, it's supposed to be a party drug, social drug, the end of the high life. I was putting drugs out, having a blast on it. I'd look in the mirror, I would pray. I would pull there, I look like I'd just been dug up. That's what you know what I mean? So as we surrender, yeah, to win. Next slide, please. Thank you. In ridding ourselves of reservations, we surrender. Anybody know what reservations are? You must know, we've talked about it a few times. Yeah. Miss Reben. Uh, a place that you're holding your recovery for relapse. Yeah, yeah so it could be Chris, we all, I'm, I'm coming, newcomers could come, I'm gonna come to kick back, I'm gonna do a year. Right, but when I've done a year, I'm going to have a little blast. I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to have a little blowout. Could be somebody's coming here for, for, for food and stuff. I mean, you know, like I'm going to do a few couple of months and then I'm having a pizza night and stuff like that. You know. We have the reservation. It's going to be my birthday. I've got it in my head. I'm going to be my birthday in nine months. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put all the effort in, all the action in. I'm going to get myself clean. But when it's my birthday, I'm going to use. Bullshit. Yeah. We've got to get rid ourselves of all reservations to stay clean. Having reservations lead back to relapse, yeah? You're not, you, you just got to rid yourself. It's your birthday, so what? Happy birthday and that, you know what I mean? Just treat yourself to some, you know what I mean? A walking park or with the right person, yeah? Yeah, yeah, remember, yeah? So, so we've got reservations. Uh, let's start again. In ridding ourselves of all reservations, we surrender. Yeah, all reservations gone. I surrender to this recovery program. I'm going to do what's suggested. I'm going to get myself a recovery buddy. I'm going to come to all my meetings. I'm going to do my volunteering. I'm going to get back into the gym. I'm, I'm going to change everything, yeah? Then, and only then, then and only then, can we be, 
can we be helped to recover from the disease of addiction? Yeah, we surrender. Please help me. I'm ready now. Yeah. Brilliant. You, this, I think this lady's going to do well. Yeah? Good. Yeah. Reservations can come at any time. We come here, we we're ready, we, we want it, we want it. Reservations can be. Yeah. Good. Good. And that's what we want to do. Anytime they enter our head, we need to, we need to get them out of it as ex reservations. Yeah? Reservations lead to relapse. You know what I mean? Yeah? Even on certain people as well, there's people here from recovering from toxic relationships and stuff like that. That reservation, you know, sometimes I've done it myself, I'll save a phone number. I might block, or I might be blocked, but sometimes they don't block everything, they leave a little Insta Instagram account open. You know, why are we doing it? It's a reservation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I might just try it, nah, I might, whatever, I might try the number, they might answer. Oh, I rung you by accident. You know what? Oh, I pressed my phone, and it you know, it starts off again, doesn't it? We get back into into it, yeah? Or we can keep a drug dealer's number. Yeah. I did it for three years, I kept the bloody diagrams number in my phone. Why, I wouldn't delete it. I didn't want to use it, why did I keep it there? It's gone now. I have a reservation just in case, you know, I've got a back, I've got some, you know what I mean? Anyone want to touch on that? Ribbing reservations, I can't think I kind of touched. Covered a lot of that, didn't I, yeah? We're all all right with that, yeah? Clock's ticking. Thank you for your patience, yeah. Is everybody all right with what we're doing, where we are with stuff, yeah? Newcomer, so yeah. I'm, I'm not being rude by calling you newcomer, but obviously I don't want to say your name. Yeah. Are you happy with where you are, yeah? You yeah. feeling it? Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. Everybody else understand what page we're on that, yeah? Just so keep it really simple today. We just, just say it's just bouncing it around a little bit, yeah? Next one, please. Last slide. Last slide, yeah, the last one, yeah. Work it out, just the time. So we must accept that recovery is the solution, yeah? Using is the problem, yeah? It's caused a problem for many years. Acting out in certain behaviours, negative behaviours, is living in the problem, yeah? Not coming to meetings is living in the problem, yeah? Hanging about with drug dealers or ex-boyfriend who use drugs or toxic relationships is living in the solution. Sorry, he's living in the problem. We need to live in the solution, coming to meetings, yeah? Doing what's suggested, volunteering, going to the gym, yeah? Sticking with the like-minded, working a recovery programme. Yeah, going, to, going down to, to the NHS drug services, senior drug worker, alcohol worker, turning up right at the right time for appointments if it's in person, sticking to your telephone uh, appointments, yeah, sticking to your scripts, all that stuff, yeah, is, is living in the solution, yeah. We don't want our lives to be the way they have been. We don't want to keep feeling the way we've been feeling, yeah. It's all about change, isn't it? It's a programme of change. What, 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 what did we change when we come, in, when we come into recovery? One thing. What is that one thing? Everything. Everything. <laughs> the one thing to the newcomer. Yeah. We, we change it. What are you changing? You've got to change everything. People, places, things. <coughs> Anything that gets you back into active addiction, you need to change. You need to walk away from it. You know, we have to have horrible to people. You know, you want to change it all. Full of fear for some people. Well, what my, what my, my life could it be like? How can it be? Believe me, trust what I'm saying, change it. Life will come back tenfold. The stuff I busy my life and I fulfill in my life is now, without any drink, drugs, hanging out with certain people who are involved with stuff like that. The life's just blossomed. The fruit is, whoa. Yeah, anybody else want to touch on that stuff? It's the last slide, you need to get talking. Danny. I think for me, this one, right, this underlays the fact. There's, there's never both measures in this one. I'm either in or I'm not. Do you know what I mean? I can't have one foot in one camp and one foot in the other. You know, and that doesn't mean medication wise, and I know we're reducing. But for me, I'm either on it or I'm not. Do you know there's never 50 50, there's never like sort of 80 20 or whatever I would try and tell me in my head. It, uh, it just doesn't work. You have to be like sort of fully on it. I mean, because like if I think, oh yeah, I'll just have a little double every like few months, you know what I mean? That's, it, it just totally messes us, you know what I mean? It has to be like, <coughs> off, you know what 
I mean, so yeah, and on is I'm in recovery and I'm in I'm in the solution, and off is I'm fucking marvelous one. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah, good stuff, Danny. Anybody else on that one? I love what you just said there, Danny. There's no, is there? I've been mm -hmm. it myself. You know, there's no grey lines. You just have a black or white. You're either in recovery or you're not. I did it. I, I didn't work my boundaries. I didn't, you know, I didn't. If that were a reservation or something in, in the recovery journey when we're learning stuff, that the boundary stuff, I never took much notice of that because I wanted to, I still had this, I'm not fully surrendered because I still wanted to do a little bit my way. Yeah. You know, I wanted to fine tweak my recovery to me, have a bit of a break in the rehab, come back, get back out there, doing it my way, doing it differently. I'm not going to use big amounts no more, I'm going to socialise a bit, I'm going to be whatever, I'm going to have my cake and eat it type of thing. Didn't work. I always fell short. I relapsed. Some big relapses, you know what I mean? It was only when I put boundaries, started working <coughs> boundaries in my recovery that I get well. I never stay away from certain people, places. You know, like why, why am I going on Eccleso Road? I've never been recovering. I'm not saying people go on there and have a coffee and stuff like that. Why am I going back to old homes or city centre bars or stuff where people are using, not in every bar, I'm not putting people's bars down and stuff like that. But I mean, if you're out there and I'm in it, there's a good chance that I will start drinking again. There's well, a good chance that I will get off of drugs. There's a, a big chance that I would probably take them, especially if I started drinking, I've changed the way I feel, I'm not in full control of, of what I'm doing. You know, I'm just putting myself in dangerous situations and it's about working these boundaries, being vigilant, coming into recovery, newcomers, like this is what I want. I want a bit of what they're talking about. I want some of that. So how are you going to get some of that? You're going to do what's suggested. You're going to do what they've done. If it's worked for them, it probably will work for you. And if it doesn't work for you, then we'll fine tweak it and try something a bit different, yeah? So you actually get it, yeah? And that's what it's about, working them boundaries. I don't have to go to certain places no more. I don't have to have anger with certain people. And I don't have to be involved with certain things, whether it's drug dealing or some people come into recovery and still want to be a bit of Jack the Lad. I'm going, to make, I'm going to make a few quid. Well, if I'm doing all my recovery stuff, I surely can spin a few uh, ounces of this on, ounces of that. No, you can't. You can try it, but you're more than likely enough. I've done it for experience. End up picking up drugs again. You know what I mean? Because the temptation is there. Try this product, what substance, whatever it is. Yeah, it looks right, but 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 the proofs in the pudding. I'm gonna have to stick it up my nose. That's when I know because there's that much stuff out there that looks right. Chemicals in it, I'm only going to know properly if I stick it up my nose. Once you put that first line up, it's all over, innit? I'm doing half ounce I'm doing whatever in. I'm owing people money. I, I, I came out of real people owed me money. You know, they offered to pay me and stuff. Like a fool, I thought, yeah, like a fool. I was just sort of about to try it. I had to put boundaries, I had to walk away from everything. Walk. I think, I think we have so many, whatever they owed me, keep it. That's where it took it and keep it, you have it. Best investment I've ever done. Just walk away. You've owed me so much. What the constant ringing people all? Oh, I'm on a promise they're going to pay you, they're not. Send me out a twist. Just keep it. Keep it. That's the old life. I want the new life. Best investment, whether it's £10,000, walk away from it. Whether you're involved in a business, whatever that is, it's none of my business, but it earned you money. Good money, but it kept bringing you back to active addiction. You know what I mean? You can't get out of your whatever. Walk away from it. Walk away from the money, the bright lights or whatever, to get well, start a new life, change everything. You know what I mean? You'll always get another house. You'll always get another car. You'll always get another husband or another wife or whatever. You'll never get another life. You've got one life. You need to look after it. Yeah? And do what's suggested. Yeah? This stuff will save your life. I'm going to end it with that. Thank you. Cheers. Uh -huh.